Hi all. Today I just wanted to quickly share with you some sounds I've recorded at an old steelworks not too far from where I live. The large metal object you see here is a molten steel ladle with a capacity of 100 tonnes. It was this that initially sparked my interest in the site, however after applying the contact mics to it and hitting record, the results were not quite as impressive as I had hoped for. So what follows are some clips of me trying to find other interesting sounding objects on site, with the overall aim of trying to create some cinematic impact sounds. Here's an example of one that I've created to explain better what I mean. For those of you interested, I'm using two C-Series Pro contact microphones going into my Zoom H4n. Everything was recorded as 24-bit 96kHz stereo. I'm giving away a free sample pack containing one shot of the best sounds I captured. A link to this is in the description below. The sounds themselves are not up to much, but once you add a bit of reverb and delay, amongst other things, you can quickly come up with some interesting results. In the second half of this video, I'll show you what I did to make these simple recordings sound huge and impactful. So, without any more talking, here is what I found. Okay, so I'm back in the studio now and I've got uh, two of the sounds that I took uh, loaded up here with me. Um, I've already processed everything, so I'm just going to run you through the layout that I um, have created here. Uh, first of all, this is what the both sounds sound like, first of all. Uh, so this is, the, um, this is the higher pitch of the two. And then the lower pitched... Uh, which I just change a few things around. I'll explain all this in a moment. Um, take off the delay. Uh, leave everything else as is for now. Okay, so two very um, different but equally cinematic kind of hits. Uh, might be good for a horror film or horror game, that kind of thing. So um, what I basically got here is we have. Um, the source channel, which is this second channel you can see here, which highlighted. Um, I've added a bit of EQ, uh, just a roll off of the low end at 30 hertz. And then I've got this being fed into buses one and two. 
So uh, no direct output, just purely to buses one and two. So in bus one then, uh, which I've titled the low bus, this is uh, looking at the low end, what I've done first of all is I've filtered out everything um, above 180 hertz, as you can see here. So everything about uh, above that, uh, that figure is being cut completely. Uh, the reason being that I wanted to just deal with the low end. What I've then immediately gone and done is uh, using the Logix Gain plugin, I've switched uh, the low end uh, entirely to mono by hitting this mono on button here. Uh, this is just to avoid any any stereo spread in the lower end, um, which is just generally not a good idea and also rather pointless as well because of the way that the human ear um, isn't able to pick up as well the direction uh, of lower frequencies. So those two are pretty basic. What I'm then running it through is a compressor, which is just taming um, any of the, with it being the sort of the low end, I've got quite a high ratio of, of four to one. It's just to to tame the initial impact. Um, by bringing down the initial impact, I'm hoping to accentuate the sustain of the tail, basically. So it's just bringing that down. You might not be able to see it so much with this first example, but with the second example, uh, you should see uh, quite a lot of reduction um, yeah, in the low end, so a dramatic amount, but then tapers off around this area here, so you, you kind of get a, uh, a more prominent tail uh, in the sample. What I've then done, and this is the final step with the low end, if we stick with the second sample because it's uh, more relevant, um, is I've applied a free plugin called Crush. Uh, I'll put a link to this in the description. Uh, all I'm really doing with this, adding a little bit of um, bit crush uh, distortion. Uh, I've changed the filter to uh, around uh, 1 kilohertz, and then I've driven the, the signal quite a lot. Um, so 80% drive here. Uh, so to give you an idea of what this does, if I just turn it off for a second, this is the same sample. Just lacking a lot of that low end, but then if you drive this, you get a much more kind of monstrous, almost distorted, but low end distortion type. It's just, it's very, I think very typical. Um, of something you'd, you'd expect to see in a film or, like I say, in a horror game, that kind of thing. Um, so that's the low end. Um, that's then being routed to bus three, which is simply this one here. It's just a mixed bus. So both the low and the high, which I'll go through now, just going straight to bus three, which is a mixed bus, which goes out then. Okay. Um, so the uh, bus two, the, the high bus, which is also coming from the, the source here, uh, this one, just on the opposite really, um, filtering out everything beneath 180 hertz. Uh, so we're just dealing with the, the, the mid uh, to high frequencies. I then applied some reverb um, using uh, this Rome. It's uh, I think it's Rome, Rome, not sure how you say that, um, by Native Instruments. Um, this one's not a free plugin, unfortunately, but I think you can use any reverb plugin. Um, there's a really good free one, which I've got here called uh, Microfuse. Uh, which I got with a computer music uh, subscription. You might be able to find this online, I'm not sure. Um, but really, any Reaver plugin will do here. What you're looking for is just something that's going to give you a long tail, basically. Um, if I turn it off for a moment and play this first sample, uh, this is more... Take the crush off as well. This is more the original sound. But then as I was saying before, earlier in the video, you add a bit of reverb to these sounds and they suddenly sound, um, well, I think, fantastic. Much more cinematic. So I'm using Rome. There's the um, settings that I've put down if anyone's interested. But generally speaking, any reverb with a long tail um, to create that huge sense of space will, will do here. Um, uh, after that, all I've got then is a direction mixer, um, which was just to bring in the spread a little bit. Um, looks like I, I didn't actually end up using that, to be honest. Um, I think I was trying to tame the spread a little bit to make sure there were no phasing issues. Something you might want to consider if you're going to set up a similar kind of thing yourself uh, in Logic or, or any door, really. Um, the only little caveat then to that is that with the high end, I did route uh, this out, which is going to bus four, um, and this I've, I've called the delay bus. Um, reason being, I've got my low end covered, I've got my high end with reverb. I wanted to also create, for some of these sounds, to give some variation, um, a high end that also had a, a long delay tail or kind of modulating delays, you know, back and forth type thing. Um, if I just unmute that, play the same sound again, you'll get a sense of what this adds to the, uh, to the whole thing.
and that is with microfuse off. I put microfuse on. You get a much more ringing delay, okay? Um, now, the key thing that I want to go through with this really, it is quite basic. I've done a bit of EQ. Uh, I only want the, the delay to be audible in the kind of the mid-frequency range, nothing too high and also nothing too low. So I've just um, cut both the high and low there. I've then gone through, um, we'll come back to that vocal transformer, because that's the key thing here. I've then gone through a, a reverb, which again, I'm using Space Designer, which is a, a native Logic um, plugin. You can use any reverb. Again, you're looking for a, a big sound. Um, and then finally, um, oh, in fact, sorry, that's the channel EQ at the end of the chain there. So to come back to the key thing on this, it's the vocal transformer. Uh, what I've done is, if I just turn this off for a second, that's what things sound like normally. With the vocal transformer on, it's hard to hear at first, but it does just accentuate that high-end kind of ringing sound that you get. Um, the way I achieved that was just by turning up the formant filter. So I've got plus seven here. So any kind of plugin that deals with um, vocal formants would be probably a good a good replacement but if you're using logic you can use a vocal transformer uh, and this formant just gives you like i say a, a higher pitched ring to the to the sound compared to if it was off it is there but it's a little bit more subdued this really comes um or really shines when you use it in conjunction with the microfuse or with some other delay plugin whatever it is that you're using so without but with a delay, you get this. And then with... So you can hear it much more with the delay, the difference that this, this plug-in, um, that, that slight increase in the formant is actually adding to the sound. Um, after that then, that's going through bus three as well. So you've got your low, your high, and your additional high, but the delayed version, all going back to a mix bus, um, which in this case, I'm just running through a compressor on the out channel, um, just to, again, tame a few things, make sure nothing's peaking, uh, and that we're, we're keeping a consistent level with all of these sounds. Um, the only other little thing that I haven't mentioned, uh, which is not achieved through uh, any sort of effect, is that these samples have both been pitched up and down. So this one, for example, uh, this first hit we've been listening to, Actually, with no effects, it's going to be hard to hear because obviously you're losing a lot more than just the pitch. But with no effects, it sounds like this. So it's a low hit. And then if you see, I put it back on the um, the second channel here, where I've got flex enabled and speed effects. Um, then just to pitch it up a little bit more, to increase that ring, that metallic sound. It's just closer to what I was looking for with that sound in particular. Now the other one, uh, I've gone the opposite way. If we drag this up to its original channel, you can hear this is the original hit. It's got that potential, that bassy kind of low-end sound. But if we put it down here, you can see I've stretched it out uh, over a longer period of time. It's been pitched down. You get a much lower. And that's with the, uh, the ring on, um, which I was going to turn off with this one. So there you go. Um, if you want to know how to um, stretch things out with Logic's uh, Flex, I have got another tutorial on doing a cassette half-speed tape effect uh, where I mention exactly how to do that. So I'll leave that if you want to go and uh, go and have a look at that. Absolutely fine. Um, but yeah, that's it. That's how I made the samples. Um, like I said before, there's two sample packs uh, I'm giving away for free. One is the original recordings, which you've seen me um, take uh, down at the Steelworks, and the second sample pack is only a, a couple of sounds, um, but it's a few of my favourite cinematic hits that I made with this template right here that I'm showing you. But if you wanted to, you could obviously take the first pack, either the source material, just the raw sounds, uh, and create your own um, template in your own door. Uh, it's a lot of fun uh, making these these you know large uh, impact sounds. Um, but hopefully, this will just give you a starting point um, as to how I went about doing that. Uh, the main thing I take away from this really is just to remember that you will, generally speaking, would want to uh, uh, make sure that anything on the low end is going through some sort of plugin that makes it mono, um, and then you've got your your high end then um, can can fill out your stereo field, and that'll be much more friendly then to uh, 
different systems. Um, not so much headphones, you won't notice, but certainly on speaker systems, uh, if you've got a, a wide stereo field in the low end, you're going to get some serious phasing issues. It's, it's not going to be, it's not going to translate very well. So do just watch out for that. To those of you that have made it this far, thanks for watching. If you have enjoyed the video, please leave a like and a comment below if you have any questions or requests. To finish off, here are a few examples of the cinematic impact I've created from the recordings of this site.